Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Do you want a cool Minecraft banner like this? You can use it for your thumbnails or any other kind of projects or anything like that. Or do you want something custom like this one? Yes, go ahead and follow that one. Subscribe. Well, if you want to learn how to make one of these cool banners, then stick around because I will show you how to do it in four easy steps. Those four easy steps, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know. Okay, here we are on the laptop. Sadly, paint.net will not work on Macintosh or Linux or anything else, only on Windows. Step one, installing the Minecrafter font. Okay, to get the Minecrafter font, all you have to do is go down in the description, click on the link in step one, and that will bring you up to this page, which is from dafont.com, and it is the Minecrafter font. You just go over here to download and download it. Now you can see down here in the bottom left corner, you've got a zip file. You're gonna open up your zip file, and here's all the information in there. It's got the licensing agreements, you read the readme file, all that good stuff. Okay, so you're gonna to go to your C drive, Windows, and then fonts, and then open up your fonts folder. Make it smaller, so you can just check both of these and drag them in. Once you've put these two files into your fonts folder, step one is complete, and you can close up all these windows. Step two, installing paint.net. So after you've completed step one and installed your Minecrafter font, it's called Minecrafter, not Minecraft. You need to go on to step two, which would be installing paint.net. So if you click on the link in step two in the description, it will bring you to paint.net. So you wanna be on the download page. So if you look down here as operating system, it is only Windows. It will not work with any other operating system. So down here, you scroll down a little bit, and download. If you would like to install paint.net, use one of the buttons below. Now, if you look, you can download it from Windows 10, the Microsoft Store, but you have to pay for it. For some reason, you have to pay Microsoft $8 for the privilege of downloading this free program. Or you go down here and download it from this website, which is free. And they're both the same versions. Everything's the same. It's just free download for you. So you're going to click. Don't click this one. Click this and you will be brought to this page and it's got a bunch of information there and you want to download it right here on the right hand side. And here's your zip file and you're going to click on this application and it says this following will be downloaded and installed paint.net. And this is really quick. Once it's done downloading all the stuff you want to do in Express, you don't want to do custom, just Express. I mean, if you really want to do custom, you can do custom and put it wherever you want, but Express works just fine and you've got your license agreement and then it's installing okay so it is done installing you want to start paint.net hit finish we can close this window and we can close this window so this is paint.net okay now that paint.net is open if you guys come up here and look at effects you're not going to have all these cool effects you're only going to have like four or five of them so what we need to do is add all these cool effects. So now that we've started paint.net, we can close paint.net. Step three, installing the plugins for paint.net. Okay, for step three, we wanna click on the first link in the step three in the description. So this link will open up the forums.getpaint.net. And it is a topic of essential plugins for paint.net. Okay, so all you have to do is come to this page. And you see this guy's the admin. He's one of the guys that designed it. So we just click download. And it will download this zip file. So you're going to open up your zip file. And here's your Boltbait's packet installer. Of course, it's an application. So all you have to do is click on it. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to move files around. And Windows might not like it very much. Just click the more info. Since it's from an unknown publisher. Now, if you don't trust it, then there's nothing you can do. But I trust it because it's from the admin of one of the guys that actually made the program. So we click run anyway. And here's Mr. Bolt. Hey, he doesn't look anything like his profile picture. 
So here you can click which uh, plugins you want and all that stuff like that. What you would go down here is you click I agree and you can just check things that you want or check things you don't want. I just click install everything because these are all great plugins. I'm still new, of course, to uh, paint.net, so I don't know how to use half of them, but I will be learning. So we just click install everything. Done. And it's installed. Yay! Now, Mr. Bolt, we are done with you. We can close you. The next thing we need to add is the cool drop shadow. So you click on the second link, and it will bring up this page from Miss... Mr. Miss Chris, I'm not sure. There's no picture on this one. You just scroll down here and click on this link. Oh, Chris, there's there's a it's 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 a guy. So we click right here, download, and it's the same thing. This adds all sorts of cool things, but we just really want the drop shadow. But we'll take all the different gradients and all this other stuff again, since it's not published by anybody. It's written just by a user. You get the warning and you can put all of them. You can just put the drop shadow if you like, but I, why not? Why not have them all and install close? And then this should start back up, start up paint.net again. Now you come up to your effects tab and boop, there you go. See, there's the object, there's your drop shadow there. And this is where you're going to need your text formation. But if you go to text formation, you don't have this one. So now that's the third one we have to install. So you can close down paint.net again because you don't need it right this second. And we will close down this one. So now you click on the third link in step three and it will bring you up to TR's monolithic. It's a 3D text generator. It's a little old, but it works great. Just scroll down to the bottom of the page so this one is not an executable file. So you're just going to have to open it, extract your zip file, and see, here it is, trsmonolithic.dll. So you're going to take this pickle file. See, it's a dill, it's a dill pickle. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a dad. I have to. I can't stop myself. We're going to want to move this file into our documents paint.net app files that's why you had to open paint.net because that will generate this file and effects so you're just going to drag it into effects and there's already a file there so we're just going to replace it and there you go now you can close that and you can close that and all of your plugins and effects have been added step four making the logo okay let's start off by opening paint.net Step four, let's actually make a logo. Okay, the first thing we want to do is go to image and go to resize. We're going to resize this thing. You want to uncheck the maintain aspect ratio and we're going 1920 by 1080. Now, why are we making it so big, such a big canvas? Because if you make your logo on a small canvas and you try and blow it up, then it gets all grainy. But if you make a big picture or a big logo and you shrink it down a little bit, it stays nice and crisp or you can even blow it up even bigger. So that's what we're going to do. Now that it's been resized, we're gonna to wanna to click over here on the left to where it says magic wand. Click on that. Now we're gonna click anywhere on the screen and it turns bluish color. Hit the delete key and it goes to the checkered, the checkered pattern back there. That means that the background is transparent. So now that we have our canvas ready, let's go to effects. Now we go down here to text formation and we want to go to TR's monolithic. Open that up and we come here. Now we go over here where it says your text and that's where we're going to write Minecraft. But look at that, that's terrible. We're going to then come over to our font selection, scroll all the way. Scroll all the way down to Minecrafter. Now, the bottom one is the old school with the cracks in it, and the other one above it is without cracks. This is all personal preference. I like the cracks. Now that you've got your font, this color is not very good. So first thing we're going to do is go over here to Glow, click the actual button, the actual color itself, 
Now we're going to want to define a custom color. All these colors will be in the description below with all the numbers. So you can just write them all down. So for the glow, we want 173, 160, and the last one would be 157. Okay, and then boom. Now the next color, we want to move to the face. And we want to do the same thing to find custom colors. And this one is going to be 222. And the next one is going to be 205. And then the third color will be a 202. Okay. And then boom. Now we have more of a stone color. But it doesn't look quite right, does it? So we're going to go to a highlight and just go to black. And then we're going to scooch this this little slider bar up to 15 by 15. You can type them in you like, or you can just do that. It's quicker that way. And then we're gonna do the same for the mids. Just go to black, define custom colors, grab this little arrow and scroll up to 15 and then hit okay. Now the shade, it's more, it's a little bit of a lighter black. So we wanna give just that little bit of contrast. So we're gonna go 37 on this one and 35 on the next one. 35 and the next one the, the next one the third one will be 38 and hit okay and there you go isn't that cool but it's kind of looking a little flat so let's adjust that pitch so you can either grab this slider and move it this way and this way or you can just type in this little box right here and we're going to go a negative 20 degrees and say so there you go now it gives it that little bit of lean back that cool lean back but it's still looking a little flat. So let's go to our depth. Now our depth, we can move this to 400, oop, not 4,000. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, look what happened there. We want to go to 450 and boom, it gives it some depth. See underneath here, you can see the back. Now this next number is not an actual number number because it depends on what you write in there, but you take your zoom and you can move it in and out. Now we don't, we want it to move up, but we still want a little bit of gap right here because the drop shadow kind of goes around it. So if you put it right to the edge, when you drew your drop shadow on the next step, it'll get cut off. So just give it a little bit of space between the sides and there you go. So now all you have to do is hit okay. There you go. Look at that, isn't that cool? Nice and big. Now for our drop shadow, we have to go here, go to object, drop shadow, because you want to put a drop shadow on the object in here. And here we go, we're going to take our blur radius, slide that to zero. And then our widening radius, it's at five. We're gonna bump that up to a cool dozen. After you move that up, you hit okay. And there you go, your, get rid of that, so you can actually see it. That is your Minecraft logo. If you wanted to put two words one on top of the other. If you typed it in and then hit enter like this, then, you know, I mean, you could come over here and do this, but to try and get the spacing right, but you're not gonna be able to change the angles on both of them. So what you have to do is, let's change this to Scousy, to Minecrafter. Let's bring Scousy out a little bit. There we go. Boom. So there's Scousy. All right, see, we've got Scousy here, big huge letters. So now if we go back to effects, we go to text formation, go back to TR monolithic, and there's Scousy, and then you can see there's another Scousy written on top. So what you're gonna do here, and we're going to put old Pamster. Boom, change her to her font also. Now you can see they're overlaying each other. So what we wanna do is to go to where it says top. So you can see the outline as you move in this slider around. Once you get it close, you can just, you know, move it around with the arrows. We're going to go 65. There we go. All right, Scousy and Pamster. But that's kind of boring. So let's change it up a little bit. We want to just take away the negative. And boom, we changed it. So it's leaning back. Okay, we're going to have to move it down just a little bit. That's up. We're going to have to move it down just a little bit. So we got a little bit of space between the, the two letters. I mean, if you wanted to have it where Pam was going real far back, like some of the other logos, 
you'd have to start with your bottom word first and then put your top word on top. If you know Pam, she's a fiery redhead. So let's give her on her face some red. Boom, look at that. And then we can put the glow. We throw a nice flamey yellow here. Boom, look at that. Okay, then we hit okay. Scousy and Pamster. Now we go here to effects and we go to our object and our drop shadow and boom. Hey, once you're done with all your nice little things, then all you got to do is go here, file and save it. When you get to your, when you will go to save it, they'll have this uh, preview screen, which of course you can't see anything because it's so big, but you can add your thresholds and all this other stuff. I just leave everything the same and just hit OK and save it. All right, guys, we're back here in Minecraft as the sun goes down and check out our beautiful logo. Isn't it awesome? And if you guys like the video, click that like button. And if you really, really liked it, consider clicking the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and I really, really, really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side.